the more that I get myself out of the way, sacrifice myself so that I can serve and support her, I'm going to do everything that I can to do that because I know that where God is leading her and myself, it's going to be much greater and more unfathomable than we could ever think or imagine. Produced by Podcast Architects. You're listening to the Lead On Podcast, where we discuss experiences in the armed forces while exploring lessons from military leaders. Welcome back, everyone. I'm David Deary with the Enlisted Leadership Foundation, and this is Lead On, Lessons from Military Leaders, a podcast about military leaders for civilians and other military. And joining me once again this week is Corey and Chelsea Gray, uh, Marine Corps veterans that are uh, uh, talking to us about their experiences in the Marine Corps and servant leadership and, and how servant leadership in their personal life, both through their faith and their experiences, is helping them pour into other people. Guys, thanks again for being with me today. Thanks again. It's nice to, nice to be back. So, Chelsea, you just got, uh, as we close off the last episode, uh, you were just sharing an uh, experience about receiving an honor, honored graduate, or honor guard uh, award that, and talking about, uh, was it a gunny sergeant or a sergeant that- Sergeant, yeah. Um, sergeant that uh, prepped you for this and, and advocated for you and really showed you, put servant leadership on, on display. Um, Corey, I, over to you, uh, you know, same question. Uh, was there an example of servant leadership, doesn't have to be faith-based or otherwise, of just in your, your few years in the Marine Corps, somebody that uh, had a positive impact on you? Absolutely. Uh, the, one of the prime examples I would have is actually one of my peers. Um, he was a Marine that I went through the schoolhouse with who actually uh, graduated just before me um, because due to some circumstances, I had to... Uh, to my grandmother's funeral uh, while I was in the schoolhouse uh, in Fort Lee, Virginia. Um, but his, uh, his name is uh, Jonathan Milan. Uh, shout out to John Milan. Love you, guy. Um, but uh, basically, whenever we met in the schoolhouse, uh, it, was, it was under some pretty interesting and strange circumstances. Um, but basically, um, he, you know, had experience in martial arts, specifically like uh, Krav Maga. And he was uh, very trained in, the, in that area, um, very physically uh, body hardened, I guess you could say. But um, basically, he was a, one of the best examples of servant leadership as far as helping me get past some mental and physical barriers as far as physical training and conditioning goes. Uh, this guy, we would go on, you know, uh, the, Fort Lee has a battlefield. Um, that we you can take runs through and you know they have paths and walkways and so what we would do like you know on the weekends just for fun we would you know put a whole bunch of you know weighted stuff in our backpacks and go on these four just to for five fun. yeah <laughs> just for fun four to five to six mile ruck runs and you know we actually uh, got it down to where we were carrying 55 pound packs on and uh running like four miles in 30 minutes like this guy was like we're, we're going to get it. We're, we're going to get in the best, you know, shape of our lives. If you're willing to do it, I'm willing to, you know, go on this adventure with you. And, you know, so he really helped push me, uh, in a way where he was pushing himself as well to, you know, just get physically better and just be the, be the ultimate warrior Marine that we could be. And, uh, you know, I owe a lot of my, my ability to be able to, to go through a lot of things physically and mentally to him. And uh, he really mm. helped me out with a lot of that. So, yeah, and not just to be a successful Marine, but a, as a person, right? And overcoming challenges and obstacles. And, you know, it's important. It, it just, you know, iron sharpens iron, right? And um, how having that somebody, uh, you know, when I, when I used to be a, a bodybuilder, I always wanted to work out with people that were stronger and better at it than myself. Uh, they, you know, they say a uh, high tie raises all boats. Um, and uh, so, Chelsea, uh, so post-career, talk to us about uh, your business. What's it called? Uh, where can we find out about more and what is it you're doing? 
Yeah, absolutely. So post Marine Corps, Chelsea Gray Consulting was birthed actually just this year in 2024. And I can be found on Facebook and Instagram with the Chelsea Gray Consulting handle there. I also have started my own podcast as well to talk about my journey personally and share my personal testimonies and our life journey called Unhinged Success. That's going to be on Instagram, Facebook, YouTube, Spotify, and then just anywhere else that you want to find me. It's just Chelsea Gray, if there's another platform there. But I am a all-in-one stop shop for business development and business consulting. And what I do is I help bring a fresh perspective into anyone's business and I help them fill the holes so that way their boat doesn't sink because the tides are rising out there. And I really bring light into the darkness to their blind spots where they may feel stagnant. And that passion really came from the servant minded attitude of, I don't want to partner with somebody just for the financial gain. I'd rather get paid on the back end after we've done some great work for you versus doing and asking for stuff right away or anything else. Because I found that in life, if you give abundantly and you don't expect anything in return, the return that does come in your life in one way or another, it's a really good law of reciprocity that I read in the book, uh, go giver. And that entail goes in with sowing and reaping. And the more you sow, the more you reap. And that's just a biblical term. And the more you water, the more you plant, it's not up to me to bring the increase, but it's up to the Lord to bring the increase. And that's in first Corinthians four, seven. So I really live by that motto of living humbly and serving with humility to other people. And that's, what's really launched Chelsea Gray Consulting, honestly, because I started as someone who was in marketing and as an employee uh, just, a, just a few short months ago to being an independent contractor in marketing and now being a full-time business owner. But that journey didn't happen overnight. I've been working since I was 14 and my first job was pumping yogurt and filling the yogurt machines and doing that kind of stuff. But Every job before my business starting led me up to giving me a skill that I needed to be able to execute well for not just myself, but for my clients, especially. And I got into hospitality and the food industry with being a waitress and a hostess. And then I figured, hey, why not try sales? So I tried solar sales after the military and that really didn't work in 2020. So we're like, we're not going to do that. Um, and then I got into membership sales because my body physically couldn't handle going door to door knocking with how bad my back was at the time. And then became a nanny and was doing Bible college at my church. So that gave me the opportunity to really dive deep, find my identity again because of the lack of identity that I carried that I was struggling with. And once I found that firm foundation, I can truly say that my life has been on an upward tick really since November of 2020. And so coming full circle into being now January, 2024, having all these things happen, it may look like it happened overnight, but it's been a, a long process in the making and transformation. And I'm really grateful for it. Yeah, that's, you know, blind spots, we, we all have them. Uh, and it's important uh, as a leader to recognize that there are blind spots. Uh, it, it doesn't matter what rank or what position. <clears throat> and to be able to be humble enough to, number one, admit that you have them, and then number two, uh, find somebody that you can trust to help identify those blind spots. And that, that for me, that person wasn't always an equal. Um, even as a, as a command master chief, um, there were uh, chiefs and senior chiefs, E7s, E8s, uh, that I trusted um, to, and, 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 and they had my permission uh, to confront me uh, privately, not, you know, don't, don't call me out in the room full of peers mm -hmm. and subordinates, but, uh, no. <laughs> but they, they would, they would, you know, and, and, I, and I'm very good friends with, with them still to this day. And there was even some uh, E5 and E6s that they had that permission 
to do that as well. Because you know, let's face it, I just, you know, I didn't have all the answers and I, I wanted to be the best uh, I could be uh, at what I did. And I couldn't do that without other people's help. You know, and the other thing that you, you talk about with things coming full circle, uh, relationships today are unique and different. Um, you know, and, 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 and when we can remember putting in other people first, and it's not about getting something in return, it's almost that paying it forward. Uh, you know, Charles, Charles Spurgeon, a uh, great theologian, uh, once said, you know, if, if I just wish God would put a big S on everybody's back that, that he was going to act to salvation so that he would just preach to them. But because that's not the case, you have to preach to everybody. And so as a servant leader, I think for, for me is um, I want to be the best I can for everybody because I don't know which person needs whatever it is I have the most. Um, and I oftentimes never found out, uh, you know, if one person ever said I made a difference, then I guess that's why I was there. So, but I, I like to think that the, those that do, that we do make an impact, we may never hear that we did. But we just hope that it was they took something away from what we did so that they're paying it forward. Absolutely. Um, and, and then it maybe comes back around. So, um, Corey, uh, so when we when we talked, you don't, you know, again, being the servant leader, you're kind of putting your dreams or desires on hold to lift your wife up. So what is it you got going on and, and uh, you know, what's your why and what do you want to be able to do? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I, uh, as of right now, I work in the security industry with uh, Iron Goat. Uh, this is uh, this is some merch from Iron Goat, Iron Goat Training Group. But uh, yeah, Iron Goat Defense. They're uh, they're a newer company. Uh, Chelsea and I personally know the 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 founder and the co-founder, uh, Brett Christensen and Sam Jones. Brett Christensen is also a veteran. He was in the Coast Guard, uh, MSRT. I don't remember what MSRT is, but basically (laughs) he did counterterrorism. Yes. Um, And uh, great guy. Uh, He has super good morals. He's very, uh, both of them are uh, uh, very, very faithful, faithful men to God, God God-fearing men. And uh, uh, they both have crazy stories. Uh, I mean, everybody does, Uh, but they're, they're two really awesome men that I look up to. Uh, now that I'm in this profession and uh, going down this route of being in security and, you know, just selfless service to uh, the public, but also selfless service to and support to my wife, you know, supporting uh, what she has going on, helping her build her business, but also like being a source of somewhat, you know, stable income so that, you know, we're not worried about bills, which, you know, we put all of our trust in, in God that he's going to provide our next meal. And it takes a lot of trust to be able to do that. And I 100% trust that God is bringing Chelsea into an elevated place where she's going to be, uh, she's going to be sitting with senators alongside senators here very soon. And she's, she's uh, in a, she's going in a very high political route right now. And this, this is just one of the stepping stones. So the more that I get myself out of the way, sacrifice myself so that I can serve and support her, I'm going to do everything that I can to do that. Cause I know that where God is leading her and myself, it's going to be much more, it's going to be much greater and more unfathomable than we could ever think or imagine. So, uh, yeah. Just really being, really being selfless and sacrificial to myself. That makes my heart very happy. So, <laughs> I've never heard you know, him say I'm that. Sure before. it does. So that like watching what this opportunity can do and bring out of each other is really special, and I really want to honor him, and that I'm very grateful for him because the Chelsea and Corey when we first met each other. In 2019, we were like interesting, very interesting. (laughs) And just now how much he has grown, even in the past couple months is I truly commend you and I honor you and I love you so much. I love you. You uh, That's, that is fantastic. And uh, my wife and I celebrated 30 years of marriage last year. And I'll tell you that uh, even at at 30, 30 years, there's still room to grow and things to learn Um, because we're, listen, we're all sinners. And we all put ourselves first. Um, and, and pride is, is something that unfortunately 
not some, it won't be exercise out of us. Um, so MSRT, Maritime Security Response Team. Hmm. Uh, yes, just that's what Put that out there because uh, the acronyms. Um, so, th <laughs> you know, that that is, that's really, that's really great that you're able to, uh, first off, have a job uh, in order to pay the bills and to provide an opportunity for Chelsea to, to follow her dreams. Um, and, you know, there is nothing wrong at all from being in the background. My wife, uh, she had a catering business for many years and I loved to be able to um, wash her dishes and serve, be on the line and serving and almost got fired twice. But, uh, y you know, it was uh, to, to see her uh, shine and operate in a passion. And it's, it's so encouraging. And, and I think that that's something as servant leaders that we can all do right in the military or any organization. Um, you know, our goal is to always have those that we have an opportunity to lead that they can actually get farther along than we could ourselves. I mean, what a great testament to see somebody go past where we were, you know, and, and, and uh, yeah, that, that's just, that's just uh, wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Uh, well, listen, uh, you know, that's been almost, we've been at this another almost 20 minutes. And, and uh, again, I just hope that whoever's hearing this uh, takes the time to go check out Corey and Chelsea and go check out Chelsea's uh, information for consulting. Uh, visit, after you check out her, her page, hop on over to the list of leadership foundation, uh, dot org. Uh, Learn who we are. And if you're an active duty or a guard reserve, E5, E6, uh, and you're interested in some of our uh, leadership programs that we do throughout the year virtually, uh, check it out. And if you're a Navy chief, we have Chief Fighting Officer Pride Day coming up September 6th later this year. So you can mark that on the calendar. So uh, we started off with a question that, Corey, you answered uh, about the uh, worst piece of leadership advice that someone gave you. So Chelsea, um, I'll let you end us with maybe a story of, you know, as a leader, uh, whether it was in your military or since, or maybe before you said you've been working since you're 14 years old. Um, what, what's a, what's a leadership mistake that you made, but it's one of those mistakes like, Oh my God, I dodged a bullet that time. I'm glad that I got away with it, but I don't want to do it again. Yeah, because we all have. Oh, my goodness. I believe it was something that was instilled in me when I was really young because of the lack of ability to see the light in myself or know my identity. So I was like really doing a performance style of leadership where if I don't do an inward reflection, if I don't take care of myself, and, but yet I'm still trying to pour into everybody else, still trying to fix everybody else's problems. I got burnt out very easily in most, in everything. Like I got burnt out in dance. I got burnt out in swimming and diving. And, and it, like, it was just a continual cycle. And then same thing in the military, I got burnt out because I was just striving for perfection. And so, and then even after when I was in the internship at my church, still striving. And so that wasn't broken off of me until very recently, like just towards the like last year, actually. And as soon as I laid down that mindset of needing to be perfect and not trying to have this image of perfection and being humble and saying, you know what, I need to step back. I'm not doing OK and being just honest with myself and transparent with the right leadership with the right people, because I wasn't always transparent with the right people. And that really bit me in the butt because I wasn't using discernment. So with that coupled with striving for perfection, plus not sharing in confidence with certain individuals, it really just kind of was a snowball effect of me wanting to shut down and not ever want to trust anybody else, even myself. And so I would give, I gave myself a double mind. And so now that I've laid all that down, I really have a single mind and it's the mind of Christ. And I can stand with grace and confidence and a lot more peace 
in my, in my whole spirit actually of when I'm wanting to communicate to people and lead other people. And that's why just sharing my testimony in the right place at the right time has given me the opportunity to, like Corey said earlier, like actually give me meetings with people and get me in rooms that I could not have gotten myself into just because I learned that lesson in leadership is be vulnerable with the right people, share stuff when it's meant to be shared and just be real, just be vulnerable with people in the right time. Man, that's, so that is fantastic. And, and, and I just got to add to it um, a couple of things. Uh, and, 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 I, and I only hope to amplify what you said, not detract from. Uh, two quick points. Uh, you know, servant leadership includes self. And if you want to give up yourself to others, you've got to be able to have, uh, be poured into as well. And as Christians, that, that starts often in the morning, opening God's word, spending time uh, to read uh, to, uh, so that we can be changed through him. Um, and then allowing others to speak into our life as well. And then, and then speak, thinking about others, um, you know, there's a, I don't know if you guys have ever seen or read the story or a leadership example of a, like you have a mason jar and then you have uh, rocks, pebbles, and sand. Yes. And yeah. So I originally said to uh, somebody close to me, um, the, and I use that analogy. And for those that have never seen it, it has to do with uh, when you figure out what you're doing, what you're spending time with, it, you know, the tasks that you're doing. And a lot of times, you know, when we fill our day with all the sand, all the all the messy stuff, and we fill that in the jar, there's no room left for the stones or the rock, the pebbles or the stones, which are the bigger things that we need to get done. But when when you, when you talked about you know, the people that you spend time with and those that you want to trust, and I and I shared with somebody, you know, the people also we have people that are rocks, we have people that are pebbles, and we have people that are sand, and we got to make sure that we're spending our time with the rocks and then some time with the pebbles and then let the sand fill in those empty spots. And, and you know, when we're trying to build relationships with a lot of sand, we're really missing out. And, and, and then I think we're going to get to that burnout and all that other stuff that you talked about. Um, man, good stuff. Well, listen, guys, uh, thanks again. Uh, thanks for what you're doing. Thank you for your service. Most of all, uh, it's been a pleasure uh, getting to know you and, and hearing your passion, putting Christ on display in uniform and out of uniform. Uh, and, and for everybody out there that, that has given us some, some time last week and this week, uh, listening to Lead On, Lessons from Military Leaders, please visit the website and listen to leadershipfoundation.org. Uh, learn how we're building America's leaders. And again, Chelsea Gray Consulting, uh, check out uh, on Instagram, on Facebook, on the web, and her podcast. I'm David Deary with the Enlisted Leadership Foundation. Thanks again for joining me and the Grays this week on Lead On Lessons from Military Leaders. Produced by Podcast Architects.